Right, since we're all waiting to go traveling again, I thought I'd use this time to sort of delve into a bit of my backstory, a bit of the history of my travels, sort of looking back to the trips I've done ever since I was a little kid all the way up to now. And I'll mostly be focusing on the trips I did like prior to having a YouTube channel or ones that didn't make it on the channel, rather than being like, did I ever tell you about the time I traveled from Hong Kong to New York? And it's like, yes mate, yes you did, we heard. So that's what it's gonna be about. I'm gonna be doing it via a scratch map. Now I was given this as a gift a while ago, but I never got around to doing it. And it's partly because, you know, I'm just not really into the whole counting countries thing. I mean, I know how many I've been to, because people always ask me, but it's not my goal to hit 100 or all of them or whatever. I'm just into sort of having as many different experiences as possible and in as many different places as possible, but there's no sort of goal of like, right, I have to do this many like countries or scratch all this thing off a map. And I just find sort of the number a bit meaningless because there's some countries I've spent several months of my life in, but there's other countries like Sweden that I went to for like half a day when I was a teenager. And so, yes, I've been to Sweden, I can tick it off the list, but it does, I can't tell you anything about that. I haven't really experienced that country at all. And also with a scratch map, it's kind of like if I flew to Moscow for a weekend, do I then get to scratch off all of Russia? You know? So I think what I'm going to do is like for the US, you can sort of scratch it off by state. So for any of the larger countries, um, I'm going to sort of just scratch off the regions I've been to rather than sort of going, oh, I've been to a couple of bits in China, Whoom, all done, you know? Plus, there's a lot of value in revisiting countries. Like, just because you've scratched a country off the map doesn't mean you've experienced everything there is to do there. Like, there's always more adventures to be had. Pretty high up. But anyway, you might be at this point thinking, well, all right, mate, you're sitting there on your high horse. If you're not into counting countries and you're not really into scratching things off a map, why are you doing this? And um, part of the reason is one, I thought I'd make a nice video actually just talking about my history and growing up and all the travels I did and sort of you know, giving you guys a bit more backstory. But also, I think it'll look very good on my wall in the living room here because right now I've got this old Middle Earth map, which I love, but it's getting a bit old and tatty and the colour scheme doesn't really work with the room. Whilst this sort of black map would kind of fit in nicely with like what I've got going on here. And I'll be a bit more personal, tell a bit more of a story, be more of a conversation piece when people come round. At least when I'm allowed to have people around again after this pandemic. So enough blabbering on, let's get on with it. So this is the scratcher. Kinda of looks like a guitar pick. And we got some stickers. They can f off. Alright, let's get started. So easy one to begin with. I was born in England in a small city called Durham in the very north of the country and as I'm sure everyone in the north of England will be happy to know the symbol they've got for UK is the Big Ben in London. Now the first country I went on holiday abroad to was in fact Germany. This was in the summer of 1984. I wasn't even one years old yet. And we went to Garmisch Parkenkirchen. It's a German ski resort town in Bavaria, but we went in the summer to do hiking like we always do. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna be honest, don't really remember anything at all of it, obviously, because I wasn't even one yet. But yeah, I traveled to Germany quite a lot over the years, and I'll get to more of that in a minute. So I feel quite comfortable scratching all of Germany off the map. Because Germany's also where I went for my second trip abroad the following summer, where we went to Berchtesgaden. Gorgeous place we visited quite a few times, although not for not since I was like 16 years old now. Then, summer of 1986, my first trip to Switzerland, one of my favourite countries in the world. But yeah, Switzerland's a country we really fell in love with and just kept going back to over and over again, as I've explained in my videos when I've been there. And then, I said I was going to get onto more stuff from Germany. In the summer of 1988, well not just the summer, we actually lived in Freiburg in Germany for nearly five months, I believe. Uh, my dad had a placement at the university working there, and so my brothers went to school there, I went to kindergarten, and it's strange, whenever I look back at that time, like interacting with the other kids at kindergarten, I don't remember not understanding them. You know, even though I couldn't speak German, the only thing I do remember is sort of being really bored during story time. So I'm guessing that's because I couldn't understand a word of it. Uh, maybe it was a boring story as well, who knows? But yeah, it's kind of funny, as a kid, you just, just find a way to communicate anyway, even if there is a language barrier. And whilst we were in Freiburg as well, we'd sort of take long weekends into Switzerland to keep going back to Grindelwald and stuff. So I literally don't know how many times I've been to Switzerland because we would just go for weekends and, you know, we didn't keep track. But it's one of the reasons it sort of cemented it as a place that meant so much to me. It was going there so much as a young kid, but we kept going back every other year growing up after that. 
now moving out of Europe. When I was six years old in 1990, I actually did my first round the world trip with the family. Uh, we went to the US, Australia, and did a stop off in Bangkok and Thailand on the way back. And I should put all these travels into context because I was incredibly, incredibly fortunate to be able to do all this traveling growing up. Like, I was so, so lucky. But it wasn't because I was like from a super rich family or anything like that. You know, we were middle class, but my parents worked at the university. They weren't on like giant corporate salaries or anything like that. And if you sort of looked at my class at school, there's probably richer families than me, poorer families than me, but we always got to go on the biggest holidays. And the reason was, was because my mum would save up and budget for them every year. She prioritized our travels over sort of spending money on other things throughout the year. So they're really careful and tight with their money all year round and saved up all the pennies so we could go off on these big adventures. And to give you an idea of just how organized my mum is with money, um, she still has a copy of the budget breakdown of the first ever trip I did abroad in 1984 when we went to Germany. Like, when I was digging out photos for this video, when I was seeing it, yeah, she found this, this little piece of paper that had a complete breakdown of everything we spent on that trip. That's how organized she is. So that's how we afforded to be able to do these trips. And even when we went on the adventures, like the first few times we were in the States, you know, we were sort of like, there's five of us crammed into a Motel 6 room, you know, eating out at McDonald's was a treat. We did everything like self-catered. So from a very young age, I learned sort of how to budget to be able to afford trips and sort of, and be comfortable just quickly moving on the road all the time. Because when we went to the States, we didn't just stay in one area for a week or two, we drove all over. So yes, very, very lucky to be able to do this growing up. A lot of people don't get to do this, so I'm aware of how fortunate and privileged I was to be able to do this. But it wasn't like, oh, let's just go sailing in daddy's yacht around the world and fill up the paddling pool full of champagne or anything like that. It was nothing like that at all. So on this round the world trip, yeah, we flew into LA and we did quite a random trip the first time we were in the States. We were kind of visiting friends of theirs. So we went to like California and then like Michigan and then back to Utah. So that one was a bit more all over the place. Other times we kind of just got a car and drove around. And then after that, we went to Australia. So I was six years old the first time I went to Australia. And um, yeah, we flew to Cairns and did the East Coast. You know, that's interesting though. You know, they had Big Ben for the UK. Looks like they got the Sydney Harbour Bridge for Australia, fair enough, but they've put it in Queensland. <laughs> and then going to Thailand, you know, we had like just a weekend in Bangkok on the way back, so I didn't see much, but my main two memories of it was like, one, I really didn't want to take the malaria tablets, and my parents had to sort of bribe me with tons of sweets and chocolates, sort of just to get me to swallow them, which I hated, but I also ended up with tons of sweets, so it's almost like a good hustle. But also, we, when we were there, it was like the start of rainy season and like the water was like this deep, you know? At least it felt like that <laughs> to my six-year-old self. Um, but the crazy thing was, the water was warm, you know? Like growing up in the north of England, where it's bloody cold the whole time, the idea that you're wading around in rainwater and it was like walking in a spa was just, it was crazy. I don't know how much we enjoyed it as a six-year-old because the, the tourism there just wasn't set up for kids or families at all, really whilst going from like the States and Australia, which is super fam family friendly and got loads of things on for kids. We were just kind of a bit, kind of didn't know what was going on. And I remember we only really have one photo from Bangkok because we got our, our guide to take a photo of us. And uh, yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> it's a really, really bad photo. But that's all you got back then. It was like, you know, camera with filming, wind it up, take the picture. And you don't get to see what it's like to like two months later when you get home and develop it. But there you go. And then the following summer, we went back out to the States and Canada for another extended trip. Because like when I was four years old, when we spent a bit of time in Freiburg, because my dad had a placement at the university there, the same happened in Eugene and Oregon. So we spent like, I don't know, was it like a few weeks, a couple of months in Oregon, maybe three months? I can't even remember now, I'll have to check. We weren't out there long enough to join a school or anything. It was just like during the long summer holidays that they have. But yeah, Eugene, Oregon, stayed in the house and everything for the summer. Then the summer after that, we went on holiday around Europe again, sort of to favorites like Switzerland, Germany, and France. And then the year after that, we went back to the States. And basically that's what we did my entire time growing up from a kid to a sort of late teens, was just alternate between a summer holiday in Europe and a summer holiday in the States and in Canada. First trip to Netherlands was when I was 10 years old. 
which resulted in me getting food poisoning and throwing up out of a car. But I've had more fun on return trips there, that's for sure. Liechtenstein, how the hell do you scratch off Liechtenstein from here? <laughs> I remember first going to New York in 1995 when I was like 11 years old and just being blown away by it. I was just like, like all my favorite movies as a kid growing up were set there and just you, you arrive and it's just like, it's exactly like it is in the movies and I loved every second of being there. Just had this buzz about it, you know? So that's kind of like the first 18 years of my life. Now, at the end of my first year of uni, uh, me and my mate Adam, uh, who I grew up with in Durham, uh, we went to Vancouver for the summer. We got like a working holiday visa to have a long summer out in Canada. Our plan was to get jobs in Vancouver, but instead of searching for jobs, we ended up just kind of bumming around and having a fun time drinking at bars and just having a bit of a holiday, really. We went up to Banff as well. And I have zero regrets about that trip. We took, did exactly what we wanted at the time. But if I knew then what I know now, um, with the amount of money we spent, we should have just gone to like Southeast Asia or something. Even if it would have been monsoon season, just gone and had a big party there or into around Europe. There's so many better things we could have done with our time and money, but that's not how life works. You gotta make decisions with like the information you got at the time. Now, my first big backpacking trip, 2006. My main focus of this trip was doing a working holiday visa in New Zealand and before I got there I had a quick stop off in Singapore then I had a month working my way down the east coast of Australia and then once I left New Zealand I had a few days in Fiji and then I was originally just going to change planes in America but I ended up joining my mum on a three-week holiday around there so we'll begin with my three days at the start in Singapore <laughs> scratching this one off it's barely anything to do then after Singapore, I flew into Cairns, Queensland, which I talked about in the Queensland video. Got the Aussie experience and traveled down the East Coast. And that's where I kind of got into the groove of backpacking and making new friends and doing new experiences. And it was just awesome. And then I landed in Christchurch in New Zealand and got on the Kiwi Experience bus there. But before I got on the bus, the very first thing I did in New Zealand was I went to the Edoras location, which was just incredible. I was dreaming about that for years. And then basically I traveled down to Queenstown and my plan was to try and get a job in Queenstown, but I was there um, sort of in between seasons. It was like it was there autumn kind of time. And so there was no jobs going. So I ended up getting back on a Kiwi bus for a little bit and going up to Wellington and got an office job there. Just joined a temp agency, got an office job, found a place to live with some cool guys. And yeah, it was. this was like in my sort of gap year after my undergraduate course. And I'd applied to do this postgrad course in editing at Bournemouth Uni. And my basic plan was, if I didn't get on that course, because there's only like 15 places, um, if I didn't get on, I would just stay out in New Zealand and do the full one or two years out there. Um, if I got on, then I would come back, you know? And then the day before I flew out to Singapore at the start, I found out that I got on the course. I was like, right, I'll just be doing the six months overall. And I think one of the craziest days of the entire trip was in Queenstown when I did three bungee jumps in one day, having never done anything like that before. The more fun you'll have, we're not going to need to come back out. So, go. Three, two, one, get up, it. When I finished my time working in Wellington, I got back on the Kiwi bus, and day one back on the Kiwi Experience bus, I've been off the bus for about two months. First thing we did was went skydiving. I was like, shit, back in it now. Then after that, yeah, 
went to Fiji and Fiji was such an amazing place and the people there are so friendly and so kind and it's such a beautiful place and you know you get off the plane there and there's four guys greeting you with the guitars you know rather than 40 guys with guns they're just greeting you with guitars singing you songs each time you arrive on the island they have guitars out singing the songs then I get my guitar out and they're like oh we should play we should jam later and it was just it was the best time so I'd love to go back to Fiji and make a film there actually because it's such a such a cool place and then, yeah, going to the States, we flew to Colorado, and then we went up to uh, see Mount Rushmore and things, and the Badlands and things around there, which I hadn't been to before, before we did some sort of our favorites in the Grand Circle loop down there. Very thick. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know, and that trip, I really was living on a tight, tight budget. When I was 22 years old, and I was just, I had very little money to spend. You know, I had enough money to sort of get me through Singapore, Australia, and the start of New Zealand. Then I had to work and save up to finish off the rest of the trip. And so I was extremely tight with money. But to be fair though, my biggest regret for that trip was just not getting a haircut. It's like, what are you doing, mate? <laughs> I look at all those photos going, you look like an absolute prick. <laughs> the thing is, when your hair's that long, every now and again, like you're like one day a month where your hair looks amazing, but the rest of the time you just want to cut it off and it's just, yeah, terrible. <laughs> But it was the best time. And that was sort of, you know, nothing compares to your first big backpacking trip away. You sort of, you know, you change so much, you learn so much about yourself, you gain so much confidence, you push yourself to do activities that scare the living hell out of you. And so that was, you know, I certainly changed more on that trip than I did on HK2NY because I'd already done a big trip before. Whilst on HK2NY, that was James's first big trip. So that's why you see a bigger change in him across the series than you do with me because I'd already done my first sort of, you know, trip of my lifetime away. And I always wish I could have filmed that trip. I mean, maybe it was for the best that I didn't, you know, I wouldn't have known what I was doing back then, but yeah, it would have been great to have captured it on film, especially as soon as I got back and I started my editing course, I started learning how to make videos. It's like, oh, it would have been great if I could have filmed that. I mean, my mum had a home video camera whilst we were out in the States, so I have some clips, but it's not, there's no video I can make out of that. It's just random B-roll me messing around with the camera. But getting back to the UK and starting the editing course, which I did from 2006 to 2007, that was when it was like, right, well, I'm learning how to edit. I want to have some things to edit and I want to learn how to film. And yes, whilst it would be cool to sort of write and direct your own like student movie, you need to have a script, actors, and all these other moving parts to be able to do that. So I was just like, why don't I just film one of my trips away and make a video of that, and then I'll have something to edit. And so that's what I started doing. So yeah, the first trip that I filmed was in Switzerland at the Snow Open Air Festival. It was just a short little video, just sort of like testing the water, getting used to it. And then the next one I did was heading back over to the States and we did like a sort of road trip of like the Southeast, like Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and down to Florida. And that was a really good fun trip. I mean, again, that was like, that was the first proper test of doing like a longer video. I think it was like over an hour actually. And we even got to go to the Hard Rock Cafe theme park in Myrtle Beach, which was only ever open a few months before it went bankrupt. I don't know why I bother coming on holiday because I'm back in London. Look, we've got the Battersea Power Station, right where I work, except it's called Manchester Motor Works. <laughs> we have Piccadilly Circus. To be honest, that is a really poor attempt at Piccadilly Circus, <laughs> isn't it? That is, that is so poor. Like one uh, park attendant came up to me and said, uh, would you like to check out our show? Uh, like we've got a stunt show. It's, it's a stunt show involving roadies. Even even has bears in it. So I thought, it's got bears in it and they're going to rock out on stage. Why not? few years following that I kept practicing and making more travel videos whenever I could. I did the Grand Circle one with my mum, then 2012 I did those road trips like around Scotland to Amsterdam and then Italy and so many other little trips I did as well. Like I went to Latvia and Estonia for a long weekend with my mates and the beautiful beautiful countries. It's like a fucking fairy tale isn't it? And I really look forward to getting back there when we do the Eastern European road trip this summer and you know film those places properly.
And then we get on to Hong Kong to New York. And like I said at the start, I'm not going to retell that trip, uh, but it's going to take me a while to scratch off. Well, yeah, we did cover a lot of ground in that trip. And that was the idea, you know, with New Zealand, my first big backpacking trip, I was like mostly in one country exploring that place. You know, I had little bits and pieces before and after, but this trip I just wanted to see as much as possible. You'll notice I've been a bit careful with uh, scratching off Chile, Argentina, and Brazil and Peru, because we only did a little bit of those countries, and uh, yeah, it just wouldn't seem right scratching off like all of Brazil when I've only seen a small part of it. Particularly like Chile, where we're only like three days in Santiago. If you look over at the States, you can kind of see why we did the route we did, so like the bits I've missed out here, that's why we kind of went to the deep south and up from there. Damn, don't you guys work? <laughs> Nope. <laughs> My first trip away after HK2NY was three months after and I went to Poland for a stag do and I remember sort of just after being away for nine months and being back for three months suddenly being at an airport again and back on a plane and back in a hostel it was just like oh right I'm back where I belong you know going home felt like the holiday or felt like the foreign place if you know what I mean. What do you think of the local birds in uh, Carl? That bird's all right. She looks a bit pissed. Let's go for a closer look. <laughs> she looks... Hang on a minute. Look at this. She <laughs> <laughs> looks out of it. <laughs> now the first big trip I did after hk 2 ny was the Quest for Everest trip in October 2014. So we went through China and into Tibet and China and then Nepal. And I got a little picture of Mount Everest there, which we got to see eventually. So next year, I think, I would be very keen to do the trek. Everest is always going to be there. Unless I'm there for tomorrow. No, 2012 shit kind of stuff happens. So Everest will still be there. We'll just crash into it in the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Then we move on to 2015 and that's when I moved to freelance, like moved from full-time work to freelance which allowed me to travel loads more. Obviously the first few months of that I was just trying to get work and starting to build my freelance life up. But the first trip I did that year was my Canadian Rockies road trip where I went to see my brother at the end of it. And then after that I went to join James who's on this massive like Central and South America trip. So I flew into Panama and then we went to Colombia and Venezuela and we were so lucky to be able to get to Venezuela considering like the country was already on the way down when we were there but it's got like exponentially worse there so you know I don't know if it's possible to travel there now when it's advisable um, but we were really really lucky to be able to see it because it's such a beautiful country. Good view. Don't push me. <laughs> Yeah, for Venezuela, it looks like they're trying to do a picture of like Roraima Mountain, one of the tabletop mountains, but it kind of looks like a giant piece of poo. Do you remember when everyone used to moan about 2016, like, oh, it's the worst year ever and stuff because, you know, Brexit won and Trump won and uh, lots of celebrity deaths and things like that, but looking back now, it was a great time compared to 2020, plus from a personal point of view, it was one of the best years of my life because I'd got into the rhythm of freelancing and sort of working travel, working travel. And in that year, I got to go to India, Mexico, went back to Nepal to do the Everest Base Camp trek. Then one weekend, I went to Romania for a stag do. On the Sunday morning, I flew back to London. Then at lunchtime, I met James, who was back in town from the Caribbean for a week uh, to get his passport sorted. So we went for beers for a few hours. Then when he went home, I went to Wembley Stadium to see Bruce Springsteen. And then as soon as I finished the Springsteen show, I went back to my flat, packed my bags, and at 5 a.m. in the morning, I flew out to Australia to film the first trip out there for SCA Travel in Queensland. And then after I did that Australia trip, I came back, edited that video, then I went to Southern Africa, I did the first time in Africa trip, which was incredible. And when I got back from that, I went to Switzerland with my mum. So 2016 was just nuts. It was the best, the best time ever. <laughs> <laughs> now you gotta hold me up, you gotta hold me up. <laughs> so for 2017, that year I went back to New Zealand at the start of it to do my road trip, which was amazing. Then in April, me and James went to the Philippines. Then I went back to Australia again. That was the time I was out there with Jacob when I did my shoulder in. And then there's one trip which I didn't film, which is when I went to the Balkans. So I was gonna do a six week trip to Croatia, Bosnia, Montenegro, and Albania. And on the first day out there, I got the camera out, started filming. I was like, you know what? I can't be bothered filming. I need a break from it. 
I was just burnt out. I mean, for like the last sort of two or three years, I've been in the freelance life of work, travel, work, travel, and just been like editing 24 seven for like three years nonstop. Like when I'm away, I'm always filming. When I'm at home, I'm editing for clients during the day, editing my stuff in the evening. And it was just go, go, go. And especially coming back from Australia, like I had such a short space of time to edit those promo videos. And then I was straight out to the Balkans and starting to film again. And I was just burnt out. So I decided to just put my camera away and not film that trip. What I did was I was gonna do six weeks, I just changed my trip to three weeks and just spoiled myself a bit and just relaxed and didn't worry about seeing any sites or in particular. I mean, I did see some stuff or wasn't worried about ticking things off or anything. It's just like, let's just relax and just recuperate and have like a proper, proper holiday rather than an adventure kind of thing. And I remember as well, like on the second day of that trip, my phone broke as well. So like, I would have days where I'd go out for a meal and I'd just be sitting in like the square of an old town. And cause you know, I was solo backpacking and some days, you know, you're meeting people hanging out, some days you're by yourself. And I'd be just sitting there in a restaurant by myself. And normally in that situation, you'd just be on your phone. But cause my phone was dead, I'd just sit there and just chill and just think. And just, you know, I was sort of thinking to myself like, right, am I burnt out cause I don't want to do travel videos anymore? Or, or am I burnt out and just need a rest, you know? And it was the best, like not filming that trip was the best decision because it just gave me a chance to relax, have a think about everything that was going on, what I wanted to do in my life. And I realized, yeah, I love making travel films. I do want to keep doing it. I just needed some time off. So it was the best decision. And I remember the following summer when I went out to do the Central America trip, I knew I was going to be super busy with work up to it. So I didn't want to arrive there feeling burnt out. So what I did before I started my like adventure in Tulum, I gave myself like a few days in Cancun where I just sat by the pool and just relaxed. You know, caught my breath and it was like, right, now let's go film and let's, have, let's go have an adventure. So yeah, not filming that Balkans trip was the best decision I could have made. I'm so glad I didn't film it, gave myself a rest. And James flew out to join me for the final weekend to have a little holiday as well. But it doesn't mean I want to go back there and film it because it's beautiful there and there's so much to do. So I will get back there again at some point and get it on film because yeah, I did love it there, really, really did. Twenty eighteen started out in Japan and yeah, we immediately fell in love with that country. It's definitely one of our favourites, probably top three. And then I went to Norway for the first time where I did that sort of short trip to do the snow survival stuff in Finse, which was basically in the middle of nowhere. And it's where they shot Hoth uh, for Empire Strikes Back. And it was an amazing experience, met so many cool people. And one of the best things about it is I managed to get Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker, to tweet me survival tips whilst I was there. Luke Skywalker has just tweeted us right here in Hoth. I can't believe that, that is so good. But that's one of those videos that hardly anyone's ever watched, you know? It's one of those videos that didn't get many views. And I guess it's partly because, you know, it's not a popular destination, so people aren't searching for spending a few days in Finster, you know? Although at the same time, when I get comments from some people going, oh, why don't you do more stuff off the beaten track? I'm like, well, did you watch this video? Did you watch that video off the beaten track? And they're like, no. It's like, well, this is where we are for the next three days. And I'm so excited to be here. And then at the end of 2018, I went back to Australia again, so twice in one year and the fourth time in three years for STA travel, but this time we were in Victoria filming stuff for the tourism board down there, but I can't rescue that footage, I can't turn that into a film because I don't have the footage and we sort of shot it in a different kind of way, which is a shame, but it was really cool going back there. We went out to a national park called Wilson's Prom. I don't remember going there as a kid and the night before we drove out there, I was speaking to this guy in the bar I was saying, oh, we got out to Wilson's Prom and I went there as a kid and um, they've got this beach out there. It's got like all this squeaky sand, but I can't remember what it's called. And he's like, oh yeah, squeaky beach. It's like, of course it's called squeaky beach. But I got my mum to scan a photo of me when I was there as a kid and I went back to the same spot and tried to line up the photo of me when I was there when I was six years old and when I was 35. Yeah, so it's a shame I can't turn that into a proper film, but it was an awesome trip nonetheless. Then we move on to 2019 and I went to Egypt and Jordan. I did that trip, you know. And one of the things I didn't mention in the video is how I flew home because originally I was gonna be flying home from Amman in Jordan but changing planes in Cairo and then they changed my flight so I was gonna have like an eight hour layover in Cairo. I was like, oh. And then 
Once I realized how easy it was just to pop into Israel, I found you could get a direct flight from Tel Aviv back home. I was like, screw it, I'll do that. And it means I could pop into Israel and just, you know, stay in a hostel and have some beers and chat with people for the last sort of couple of days of that trip. You know, after spending so much of that trip alone and by myself, which was, you know, it was still amazing. Um, I was like, oh, let's just go and have like a, a big, big party for the final weekend before I get back to the UK at the start of February where it's going to be cold and I have to go back to work and all that kind of stuff. And so I didn't film any of it because I was like, if I'm going to do a film of Israel, I want to do it properly, you know, and I didn't sort of, uh, you know, pop to Jerusalem for an afternoon to get a selfie or anything like that. I didn't explore around at all, just sort of just hung out, had a nice time and made some friends and it was great. But again, Israel is a country I've been to, but haven't really experienced or explored at all, so I'll definitely have to go back. And then the rest of 2019 was kind of a weird one for travel, because I was saving up to buy my flap, uh, so I couldn't really afford to do any of my own trips. But fortunately, very fortunately, I had um, some press trips coming. Well, why don't you say it? You <laughs> nail it. Good tour always has a beach stop, where we can hopefully get a drink and chill. This is the local beer, Carib. It's actually surprisingly tasty, isn't it? I don't know, because you're supposed to wait for me to <gasps> cheers. This is the local beer, the Carib. It's pretty good, actually. Anyway, you're supposed to wait for me before you cheers. <laughs> We've got Carl here just copying absolutely everything we <laughs> you say. You copying me. I was, I was starting to film first. We'll make cheers then. All right, cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. cheers <laughs> So I went to Antigua and Barbuda, and that's gonna be a bitch to try and <laughs> scratch off accurately. And then I was in Italy in Trentino, see the Dolomites up there, and then I was in Catalonia in Spain. But then in September, I got to do my very first tour, like host my first tour, which was in Morocco, and that trip was just perfect. It couldn't have gone any better. And uh, I keep getting asked, are you gonna do more tours? I was like, yes, definitely. It's gonna be so many more tours once the world opens up again. But loads of them planned, so don't worry. We'll be doing hopefully many tours for many years in many places around the world. That's what we call fucking fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, 2020. I was lucky to get that Vietnam trip in before everything went to shit. <laughs> and then I had that one perfect day in Switzerland in September. And that's it. That's where I'm up to. I'm up to present day now. So, that's my scratch band. That's all done. Like, uh, 2021, I've got a couple of trips potentially might be happening in January. I'll see which one comes through. I won't talk about them yet. Um, we're still hoping to do the Borneo tour in April, so we'll see what happens there with things opening up or not. And then we're looking to do maybe another tour in Turkey in June, and then hopefully one in Iceland in September. So hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to get to do those. And I'll let you guys know about it as soon as we know more about it. And then in the summer, I'm going to be hopefully doing the Eastern European road trip that I was supposed to be doing last summer, which would be driving from Tallinn down to Athens and Greece, going through all those Eastern European countries. So that should be pretty amazing. And then after that, yeah, just keep going. There's so many, so many other adventures I want to have. I mean, so the main places I want to see loads more of is obviously Africa. <laughs> I haven't seen much of that at all. Lots more of South and Central America I want to see, and Mexico and North America, and of course Central Asia here. Uh, really sort of untapped resource for myself. So I mean, that's the great thing about the traveling, like there'll never become a day where this map's completely scratched off. I'll never get there and that's fine. And I love the idea that there's always more adventures to have. I mean, it'd be terrible if I just sort of did a round the world trip went, well, that's the world done. You know, I guess I'll stay home now. Like I love the fact there's always more to see, always more to, to discover. And that includes, like I've been saying, going back to the same countries you've been to before and discovering new things there, as well as going to all these other countries. I haven't been to, but yeah, I'm pleased with that. I'm glad I've done it. It looks pretty cool. For those that want to know, the country count is at 68. As I keep saying, the goal is not to scratch all this off, it's just to have as many amazing experiences as possible and hopefully make some awesome videos along the way too. So, only thing left to do now is get it up on the wall.